Welcome to another episode of Why I Didn't, the mostly useless series where I tell you my very opinionated, subjective, incomplete view of a specialty and tell you why I did not pursue it. And in this episode, we're covering cardiothoracic surgery. Now, if you do want a more useful, objective, and comprehensive overview of cardiothoracic surgery, we do have a So You Want to Be episode on it over on the Med School Insider channel. You can find a link down in the description. And if you're a pre-med or a medical student who is interested in pursuing a particular specialty, especially if it's competitive like cardiothoracic surgery, then know that having robust research, abstracts, presentations, just research experiences overall is gonna help tremendously, especially now that step one is pass fail. Having strong research will definitely help you get into a better medical school and also into a better residency program. And we're excited to announce that we have finally released the long awaited ultimate research course over on medschoolinsiders.com. Use the coupon code CT Search for 20% off and you can find a link down in the description. And now let's dive into CT surgery. Now starting off with the things I liked, first up is procedures. So when you're deciding a specialty to pursue, the first thing you really need to decide is are you going to be surgical or non-surgical? That's a very, very big difference in terms of the lifestyle, the type of work you're doing, etc. So that's probably the first thing that you should be deciding. As they say, only pursue surgery if you cannot imagine yourself doing anything else because there generally are more sacrifices associated with a surgical specialty. I actually didn't consider anything surgical until my maybe second or third year of medical school because growing up as a kid, I knew I loved working with my hands. Very, very important to me. Enjoyed it tremendously. And entering medical school, I wanted to pursue gastroenterology, thinking that that would satisfy my needs for working with my hands because they do a lot of procedures like uh, endoscopies and colonoscopies as an example. And the reason I chose GI was because of my own GI illness and which was a large reason as to why I wanted to pursue medical school, become a doctor. But I talked more about why I did not pursue gastroenterology in this video over here. And I love that with CT surgery, it's definitely one of the more elegant specialties out there when you look at the procedures. And it does require a lot of technical skill. I mean, after all, you're literally sometimes doing surgery on an open beating heart. And how many people can say that? These are really impactful surgeries. Procedures such as heart and lung transplants, valve replacements, cabbage, aortic dissections, much, much more. And while you obviously need to be precise in every surgical subspecialty, it's especially important when you're trying to repair a heart valve or an aortic aneurysm. Now, if you followed this channel or Med School Insiders, you know that a big reason why I chose plastic surgery in the first place was that meticulousness, attention to detail, precision that really appealed to me and my personality. And with CT surgery, you can definitely tickle that same desire if you have it. Maybe not to the same extent or to the same frequency, but at least with certain procedures. And of course, the two specialties are very different in a lot of ways, but it can definitely address that need if you do have it. Another thing I liked about the procedures within cardiothoracic surgery was the variety of procedures. On the cardiac side, you'll do procedures like coronary artery bypass surgeries, heart valve repairs, and aortic dissection repairs. On the thoracic side of things, you'll be removing lung cancers or esophageal cancers, and fixing certain hernias, and of course, much more. You do a lot of these procedures differently too. Some surgeries are open surgeries, the more old school, meaning you'll open the actual chest and see the pumping heart and the lungs. And the others are minimally invasive, meaning you make tiny incisions and use various tools to help you get access to the parts of the body that you need access to. And sometimes rather than using laparoscopic tools to get access, you'll actually use machines like the Da Vinci robot. When you're in medical school, many programs, they usually brag about how many Da Vinci robots they have during the interviews, which I think is, is pretty funny. And when you're a medical student, usually towards the end, they'll actually allow you to use the Da Vinci robots during some kind of like uh, surgical workshops and practice various techniques, super fun. Next up is procedural versus medical management. Now, CT offers a lot more procedural and technical management and less medical management. So back when I was in med school, I definitely preferred the idea of doing both. Otherwise it felt like all of the, the hard work in medical school would be wasted if you weren't actually using a lot of that medical management side. Now, obviously that wasn't a very strong preference I had because ultimately I did choose a different surgical subspecialty that had very minimal medical management. But now when I reflect, I actually see that this is more of a feature than a bug. So it's the part of the job that I would enjoy more, being more surgical than medical, I mean. Students often consider cardiothoracic versus interventional cardiology. And with CT, you aren't doing as much management by the way of disease processes. You're focusing much more on the actual technical procedures. IC offers more flexibility in terms of practice pattern. So you could be anything from a general cardiologist to CCU to diagnostic angiographer to interventional procedures. So even if the job opportunities within the field of IC change, your position is still very resilient because you're always still at least a cardiologist. But CT doesn't actually have these benefits. 
but you are a master of the technical procedures. You're a surgeon first and foremost, rather than a cardiologist, and you're able to handle most surgical emergencies. For those who love both IC and CT, because there is a lot of overlap, of course, and if you're deciding between the two, I'd say that while they seem similar in terms of organ system and disease processes, they're actually substantially different in a key way, which is OR versus medicine, surgery versus medicine. Keep in mind that interventionalists, they aren't in the cath lab all the time, at least generally. You're more likely to have a mix between cath lab and clinic, general cardiology, reading some echoes, and so on and so forth. Next up is prestige. There's a high degree of prestige involved in being a CT surgeon, both within the medical field and outside of it, and rightfully so. You're doing procedures that are very flashy and sexy and very few people can do, and you're literally operating on the organ that gives us life. Now, obviously, prestige is not really a very strong or good reason to consider a specialty, but I'm trying to be real with you guys, and it is important to have your you know both eyes wide open and talk about both the good and the bad and be honest with yourself and with others. So I have also gone over both the good and bad reasons of pursuing a certain specialty up in this video, so go check that out. But now let's talk about what I didn't like. And first up, procedures. Some procedures are super badass, but you always have to consider the bread and butter of a given specialty. Don't just look at the zebras, the sexy things. The bread and butter means what are you most likely to see day in and day out? And while there is a lot of variety in the cases you'll see, the majority of patients you'll be seeing are incredibly sick patients, and most of the surgeries you'll be doing are cabbage and valve repairs. These are obviously very important surgeries. There's actually over 300,000 cabbage surgeries being done in the US every single year, and over 150,000 valve repairs. Cabbage is a surgery that takes anywhere between three to six hours. And I can't really see myself spending that much time every day on this kind of surgery. Which brings me to my next point, length of surgery. And generally speaking, they're kind of long in CT surgery. This actually wasn't something that I ever considered in medical school because I started medical school at 21. Like you're super young, you got all this energy. And even in plastics, actually, I was considering microsurgery, which is a subspecialty within plastics. It has some of the longest cases of any specialty. They, they will go over a day at times. But now that I'm in my early 30s and I'm taking things like lifestyle and health and my time a bit more seriously, at least in a different way, I realize the toll that it has on your body and you're gonna be compromising on the sustainability of the profession. These surgeries are extremely important and the physicians who are willing to spend these long hours saving patients deserve the utmost respect. Next up, lifestyle. People always joke about how CT surgeons have a horrible lifestyle. Knock knock, hi, I'm the new med student. Welcome to hell. Oh, I'm going back to palliative care. And while this is not the case for every CT surgeon, it's definitely common. Residency in most surgical specialties, it's gonna suck. And while it is several years of your life, it's more important to consider what your lifestyle is gonna be as an attending, because that's gonna be several decades, not just a few years. And when you look at attending lifestyle, it's definitely no dermatology. But still, something like IC would be a better lifestyle and even that is quite challenging. CT surgeons deal with very sick patients. I mean, think about who needs surgery on their heart or other things within their chest. You're also dealing with high stress situations on the regular. Especially at larger institutions, you'll be doing larger cases, and it will be fairly common to do long cases that will run late into the night. Of course, you could be doing exclusively single valves and normal cabbages, which wouldn't be as taxing, but that generally isn't the norm. And with regards to call, you're at least not operating overnight as frequently as neurosurgery, trauma, and orthotrauma, but when you're called in, it's a true shit hitting the fan situation. Things like aortic dissection or coronary vessel perforation during a cath. And that means you're gonna be in the OR all night. Now for this reason, some say that while CT residency isn't quite as bad as neurosurgery, the attending life is actually slightly worse. Also do keep in mind that if you're focusing more on thoracic rather than cardiac, you'll generally have a better lifestyle, but it's definitely less sexy, less exciting, and the patient population is also quite a bit different. Thoracic cases are generally done at normal hours with fewer emergencies and fewer overnight cases. But with CT surgery, I mean, it's a challenging lifestyle, which is part of the reason why some of the residents and attendings that you'll see as a student, they might be worn out, maybe a bit more stereotypically malignant, because they do have quite demanding conditions that they deal with on their day to day. Even though CT surgeons get paid well for the time that they do put in, with the median salary being right around $500,000 a year, 
Remember that compensation is not everything and you can make similar or slightly lower compensation levels with a much easier lifestyle. And as I've discussed elsewhere, again, money is not a good reason to choose medicine or any given specialty. But if you do have a passion for this branch of medicine and you can't see yourself doing anything else, then by all means, go for it. I mean, we need more people like you. But for now, me being in my 30s, I have more appreciation and prioritization for my quality of life and I do care more about my lifestyle. Next up is job security. And back when I was in medical school, there was a lot of talk going around about how cardiothoracic surgery was slowly being more and more threatened by interventional cardiology with their minimally invasive techniques. And for reference, probably should have said this earlier, interventional cardiology is a subspecialty of cardiology that focuses on minimally invasive procedures, things like stent placements. To get into interventional cardiology, you'd have to take a completely different path than CT surgery. You'd get into internal medicine residency, then cardiology fellowship, and then an interventional cardiology fellowship. CT surgery residency is six to eight years, depending on the program and whether you go integrated or independent. So integrated is when you go straight from medical school to CT surgery residency, that's gonna be shorter. And independent is when you go first into a general surgery residency, which is usually five to seven years, and then you do a CT fellowship afterwards. The integrated is usually more desirable, shorter training path and more CT surgery, but it's much more competitive. The independent pathway, gen surge first, then CT fellowship is much more attainable, but it is of course a longer path. Now keep in mind, IC is actually very similar in terms of training length because three for IM plus three for cards and then one for IC. And this debate between CT and IC has been going on for years with people saying that interventional cardiology is the future of heart procedures and how people are gonna start preferring endovascular procedures, which means endovascular within vessels, so procedures that go through the vessels, as opposed to the traditional open heart surgery, and that because of this, a lot of the procedures done within CT surgery would become obsolete. And at the time, this did definitely affect the way that I viewed the field, and I wasn't as excited about the field's future. I was looking for a field that provided me with job security and longevity, because I thought that it's what I was gonna be doing for the rest of my life. And of course, we know how that turned out. But keep in mind that everyone has their own personal risk tolerance and certain risks they're more comfortable with than others. And maybe I was just more wary of this than others because when there were similar discussions about job security for anesthesiology or EM, people said, oh, don't worry, there'll always be a need for anesthesiologists or EM doctors, which is true. And I, I saw that point of the argument, but I'd always push back and say, the question isn't whether or not we need those doctors, the question is whether the changing landscape of technology and mid-levels and so on means that you need fewer of that specialty than you did before. So just the supply and demand, which always was kind of strange because people would act like you're saying the entire specialty is gonna vanish. And no, that's never the argument. The argument is whether the supply and demand will shift such that it is now much more challenging to get a good job in a certain specialty. So onto CT surgery, should you be concerned? It is true that medical management is taking a bite out of both CT and IC. And sure, there are a lot of potential advancements in interventional cardiology that may change the way cardiology is practiced. However, medicine is always changing, and the scope of practice for every specialty in medicine can change with those new technologies and techniques. CT surgery will of course always be around because for the foreseeable future, there will be sick patients who need cabbage or new valves. There will always be emergent cases like aortic dissection that CT surgeons are needed for. And there will also always be congenital heart diseases that need CT surgeons to fix these heart defects. But again, the question is whether or not the development of new technologies can displace some procedures that CT surgeons do and whether that would decrease the demand for CT surgeons such that there would be an oversupply of them. And we have talked about this issue with other specialties like EM and IR in other videos. Coronary artery disease used to be a surgical disease, then it became an interventional disease and now it's being managed more and more medically. Studies have also shown that TAVR, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, is non-inferior to SAVR, which is the surgical aortic valve replacement in intermediate risk patients. Just one example to keep in mind. But I'm definitely curious to hear what those with more CT surgery experience have to say about this concern, the concern of job security. All right, so final thoughts. I have a lot of respect for our colleagues in CT surgery and the things that they do, but I could never see myself in that field, especially because of how grueling the quality of life can be. It is of course an essential specialty and you should get exposed to it during your medical training if you think there might be a chance it's a good fit. If you want to learn more about CT surgery, check out our So You Want To Be video over on the Med School Insiders channel. Much love my friends and I'll see you in the next one.